It's been said if you tell a crowd in Northern Ireland that you're an atheist, someone will ask whether it's the God of Protestants or the God of Catholics in whom you don't believe. Such are the complications and the scars resulting from decades of sectarian violence known as the Troubles. But 25 years ago, brave men and women, world politicians, world leaders, belligerents from all sides, with nothing to lose and everything to gain, locked themselves into a room and hammered out an historic deal on Good Friday. The IRA member was Robert Russell, who escaped from Belfast May's prison nearly five years ago. After he was turned over to police in Northern Ireland, bombings, shootings, and attacks on police broke out. In December, the IRA claimed responsibility for this bombing in central Belfast. For three decades, Protestants and Catholics have waged a bloody war on the streets of Northern Ireland. Political parties created an entire generation of hatred and violence. Soldiers opened fire. Fourteen people were killed. The outrage over the slaughter produced the men and the guns necessary for the IRA to seek revenge. There was the inevitable confrontation, eight miles from where the Queen was. <laughs> Growing up in the 60s and the 70s through bloody, nobody could have ever imagined peace would come to Northern Ireland. Yeah, I was actually living in England, going to school when the trouble started. And I saw it unfold from the beginning until the end. And I just hated it. I came to Ireland a couple of times when I was a student. I loved it and wanted something to happen. Earl Mountbatten had just sailed away from Mulligamore Harbor on a fishing trip with his family when his boat was blown up by a bomb. The force of the blast shattered the 30-foot boat, leaving just bits of wood floating in the water. One witness said he heard the explosion, then the boat just disappeared. The provisional wing of the Irish Republican Army claimed responsibility for the bombing, describing it as an execution. When I was growing up in the States, you'd see, of course, the assassination of Lord Mountbatten. You would see the bombing. Uh, the bombings of Herod's, you'd see all the strife going on in Northern Ireland, the troubles. How in the world did you get from there to where you were 25 years ago and where we are today? Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I was growing up during all the time of the troubles. It was the IRA's boldest assault on the British government. Most of Britain's top officials were in the Grand Hotel when the time bomb went off. Parts of seven floors collapsed. The IRA managed to plant the 20-pound bomb in a fifth-floor room, even though the police had put the hotel off-limits since Monday to the general public. Prime Minister Thatcher is known as the Iron Lady, and true to character, she appeared unfazed by the blast, even though the bathroom in her hotel suite was destroyed. She had been in the bathroom seconds before the explosion. You wake up to uh, some new atrocity or act of terrorism, mm -hmm. violence, I think we, we were able to do it because there was the political leadership. I mean, in Northern Ireland itself, parties prepared to, to move on and to try and embrace a different future. You and President Clinton were just, you were insistent that Jerry Adams and Sinn Féin be involved in the process, which wasn't, wasn't very popular. No, it wasn't popular. Uh, you, took, you took a real risk there. It why, was. Why? Because in 19, well, the trouble started in the 60s, just very quickly. The trouble started in the 60s. There was two efforts to try and make a solution before us. One was 74, didn't work. But then the next one was 11 years later, 85. In the meantime, the violence just got worse and worse. And then 85 didn't work out again. People tried their best. And then we go 98, 13 years. So. Um, we calculated that the reason the other two didn't work, the talks weren't inclusive, the people who were causing the problems weren't at the table. So we had to devise a way, which was risky, uh, of being able to bring in people from the Lilas and from Sinn Féin. What does this mean to you 25 years later? The agreement had lots of things, but the biggest thing was to stop the killing. Uh, I, I was in school when the trouble started. And, uh, you know, every day, from, I went from... Um, been kind of two years from the end of second level school, then through college, then through work, um, you know, then all the way through politics up to being, being Taoiseach, Prime Minister, um, and the trouble was still on. So the big thing was just to stop the violence, stop the killing, because every day the story was, you know, where the bombs were, who was killed, 
a few runs around. Simply by landing here, Air Force One made history as the first American president to visit here arrived to the most enthusiastic crowds he's seen in some time. Come on, come on. They pushed back police to meet the president who, like one in four U.S. presidents, claims roots in Ireland. It was unmistakably a day of events designed for the president and decidedly pro-peace, beginning with an arranged curbside meeting with the head of the IRA political wing, Sinn Féin leader Jerry Adams. State Department angry with you. British were not just for Adams, but also the handshake in Belfast. Oh, yeah. The British government, Jerry Adams, said they were trying up to the last second to stop you from doing that. They were. You have to, at some point, be willing to talk. And if you make an agreement, be willing to trust. And I thought, you know, that's a universal principle. It ought to apply here. And I thought if they got going, they might keep going if they had the right sort of guidance. And in a situation like this has been going on for 30 years where a lot of innocent people have been killed that didn't have anything to do with politics of either side. There's a lot of adjustment involved. I mean, people have to get used to the fact that in order to get well, they may not be able to get even.